John Hayward. Uh, I've run a small indie team here in Perth called Game Pride for quite some time. Uh, and I run a company called Developers at Large. And we just actually finished our first games project. Uh, Wes Lamont being graphic design and John Kalimi doing programming. And I'm the producer of the lot. So I do everything very poorly. <laughs> I constantly have this problem because I never had a game console to the 64, but I played NES, Master System, and Genesis all around the same time. So I get very confused. Like, my earliest memories are Mario, uh, Zelda, and Sonic the Hedgehog, which timeline wise doesn't actually match up. When I was much younger, I did play around with click and play, and I made an embarrassing Pokemon style game in that. And that's the first game I can physically remember making myself without any guides or cue basic books telling you how to make gorillas. Basically, this year we decided to sit down and make uh, one of Wes's games uh, called Shape Off. It's a memory game where you play with a board of shapes, you have cards, and you have to match the corners of the shapes and the colours on the board by switching pieces around and trying to get it through the, far the fastest. Um, the way Wes builds games, he builds a physical game first, so like a traditional board game. We do the conversion of that to Flash as a prototype, which when we got the SciTech work, we had to put it to the side and do the paid work. The old adage of con don't do contract work if you're an indie. Unfortunately, we like eating, so <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, we've got a Flash version running and we're just trying to get the last couple of bugs worked out. Basically, stick a bunch of people in a room with a really bad idea and make them work till they produce something. Um, fundamentally, that's the joke answer and it's pretty close to herding cats and any other type of management metaphor you want to use. But realistically, you get some talented people who can work together with, a pro with an aim in mind, like any project. And instead of producing a physical object, uh, like a building or a structure or a, a business, in some cases a business, um, you end up with a bunch of people who are really passionate most of the time um, to build a game. You figure out if it's a contract, exactly what the requirements are. Uh, if you're an independent group, you're going, we want to make something in this vein and we have these resources available. You then sit down and figure out how the resources can be used. And you go, okay, here's the structure. This is what we're going to end up with. The producer is the person who puts forward the picture of what you're going to make. The graphic designer puts forward the image of what you're going to make, as in what it will physically look like. And the programmer puts, puts forward the engine, the bit under the hood of what's going to be produced. And th those three groups of people work together in order to complete the project. There's a bunch of other stuff, people in there, but that is fundamentally how it works. You've got the concept, you've got the look, and you've got the engine. And between the three of them, you end up making it work. I'd probably have to say Cave Story. Um, that's what one game. I just continually play and play and play and play again. And it's not that old. And Nicholas keeps remaking it for market, trying to hope that everyone's going to think it's amazing, which it is, but market doesn't know that. But yeah, that would be the game I'd definitely take with me. Now I've been presented with the opportunity to actually work on games as a business. So my aim is to build my business up by doing more constant work, like software and web design, and use games as what we want to do for a day job, as in what we want to get out of bed to do. So. My aim is actually the same as this year, which is to develop a company which I can employ people who want to build games and be able to pay them a paycheck for doing what they love doing.